So those things we saw come out of the Fade? Two ancient elven gods. They were horrific tyrants. The worst is still coming. Well, shit. This looks pretty freaking cool. Artifacts that have been dormant for centuries are awakening. Shut it down. I'm trying. The dead stir more easily than they should. We are almost, almost at the release of Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard, and I want to talk about why I'm so freaking excited. Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard is almost here. We are, we are so close, like less than a week away, probably when you're watching this. It will be the end of a painfully long 10 year wait for this game to come out. A time in which Bioware released some, let's, let's say not, not, not great um, games. Yeah, I think that's that's probably the best way to put it. Not great games in Anthem, and to a lesser extent, because some people still like it, Mass Effect Andromeda. One of those games, Anthem, being so catastrophic that they did the unthinkable. They 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 drop they drop live service for this game right here that you're watching. Dragon Age the Veilguard. But before we get too far into Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard, I want to introduce you to my special guest for this evening. Hang on. This is legally distinct from Manfred. Manfred, say hi. He's going to join us for this little video. In the lead up to Veilguard, I've been looking at a lot of background things that Bioware has been doing that are all making me feel a lot more confident. They pivoted toward providing a single player experience without day one DLC and annoying microtransactions. And perhaps most shocking of all, they're going to allow you to play the damn game without using the EA launcher of all things. That, that horrifying thing. Now just say if they can be, have less crashes, than Dragon Age Origins on PC, well, that'll also be another win. They also dropped DRM and added Steam Deck support. They've gone to great lengths to improve player choice by giving a wide variety of difficulties from the most punishing to unkillable god mode, which turns the game into a visual novel with sparkles. They even added options for UI customization to hide or show abilities, damage numbers, mini maps, objective trackers, etc. Now that, that is one MMO-esque type thing that I actually like to see in a game. Some UI customization like that. It's a thing that I'm glad they did, unlike, you know, the Hinterlands or timed maps. Dragon Age The Veil vale Guard comes with hefty expectations, many of which it is, of course, sure to miss. After all, how can you hit the expectations not just for the fourth game in an ongoing series, but one that has been 10 years of waiting? I mean, even Manfred is sure to be disappointed in something, right? I don't have any particular critiques about this game, but don't you think this bit is getting a little bit annoying and cringy? Uh, he's disappointed. He's crying in the corner. But with all of that, it is still shaping up to look like it could be one of the best RPGs this year and may show a definitive direction for not just Dragon Age going forward, but perhaps for Bioware. There are five reasons why I'm damn excited to jump into Veilguard and I want to talk about them with you. First is going to be story. As with any Dragon Age game, we have to start with the connective tissue that binds it all together, the story. I've worked hard over these last couple weeks to avoid too many spoilers going into it, but the continuation of the story set up at the end of Inquisition and its DLC is something fans have been waiting for. Returning characters beloved and perhaps a bit conflicted, as well as writing done by some of Bioware's best authors over the years are sure to bring us a story worth telling and worth engaging with. But I would still be remiss if I didn't say that this story might, is actually the last story of some of Bioware's most fabled authors, like Mary Kirby, who unfortunately got laid off by Bioware and EA back in 2023. 
that that's gonna add a sense of sadness I think at least for myself and probably several others just as the, so the the creators of so many parts of this game so many parts of the story over the years is no longer going to be part of the franchise going forward but at least we have this uh this this send-off for them still sucks though but this is a positive video so let's let's move on Beyond the primary story, we've also learned that each companion will have detailed quests, which honestly deserves its own point. So let's move on to number two. Number two is going to be all about companions. Look, you got to look up at the camera, Manfred. When Dragon Age the Dread Wolf was renamed to Dragon Age the Veilguard, I think many of us were taken aback. We were very concerned. I mean, was this, were they just that worried? Were they that pressed that people were calling it Dad, Dragon Age, the Dread Wolf, or Daddy Age? Was that the reason? I mean, honestly, no, it was not. I don't think they cared. But when they started to describe a little bit more of the reasoning behind why, about how the companions are such an integral part to the story, it started to make a bit more sense why they rebranded and why it it might actually work out in the end. That shift of focus towards the companions and yourself, because yes, you are part of that, the Veil Guard, it really started to make the game seem, make a little bit more sense, especially when they also confirmed that no, they weren't ab abandoning this Dreadwolf story either. As I learned how integral these companions were going to be, whether you boned them or not, I really started to come around to the name. The companions in the Veil Guard are very important, of which you'll be accompanied by two at any given time, combining skills together with them to devastating effect. They will have their own significant role in the main story as well, but also have their own personalized stories. Coming from Baldur's Gate 3 where companion stories were far superior to the main narrative as far as I'm concerned, this had me even more excited. Bioware has gone to great lengths to stress that your companions have their own motivations, their own character developments, really just their own autonomy. Right down to the fact that companions can romance each other if, well, you don't romance them. The quests you go on with these companions will deepen your character, Rook's bond with them. It will also help level them up, and perhaps best of all, platonic or romantic relationships can advance these quests. They'll have their own gear and skills to manage and enchant, and with some big names behind these companions, as well as a heavy focus on cinematic scenes and dialogue, I'm really hoping that this stands out as one of the most important and exciting parts of the game. The cinematics used in Baldur's Gate 3 were a big part of what made the story hit so hard, alongside the performances of the incredible actors who played the companions and antagonists alike. From everything we've seen from Dragon Age, it looks like those companions are going to be just as important, if a little bit less controlled than, than in combat. They can kind of do their own thing, kind of. You still have some control. Speaking of, let's talk about that, the combat. I loved Dragon Age Origins combat, especially at harder difficulties. I loved BG3's turn-based combat. I also truly enjoy combat in games like Elden Ring. Basically, I have a broad taste in combat in my RPGs, I guess. But I have always loathed the combat in Dragon Age Inquisition, the game that preceded this upcoming sequel. Terribly sorry to all of you who actually loved the combat in Dragon Age Inquisition. But you see, this is why I'm kind of mixed on the combat in Veilguard, but leaning toward being excited about it, because a lot of it looks more fun. Specifically, your combat, your individual combat, your player interacting with the world looks more fun than any Dragon Age game so far. The downside to that has been the mass affecting of combat, which looks to be neutering your companions, at least their control in combat a little bit, giving them actually a bit more self control which you know to be completely fair here when i play dragon age inquisition that's kind of the same thing that happens now of course when i'm playing this i'm not playing inquisition on like the hardest difficulty and i definitely am not controlling them as much as i did in the past in say a dragon age origins especially when you set up their tactics and things like that but it's not like this is brand new is what i'm trying to get at here 
But it's the things that still remain with that that I think are making this whole puzzle come together for me. Not just that you do still have a, quite a bit of direct control of how your companions interact in combat and what combat they do and use and how to build them and everything, but also there's still a big part of that that feels a lot like real time with pause, just perhaps a bit different, a bit changed. They've incorporated this sort of real time with pause element that you can pause to use your skills that you want when you want them, which I certainly will be doing. The pausing isn't necessary as you can attach your skills to keybinds and utilize them that way, but I like the strategic control of pausing and lining up abilities, utilizing the statuses my companions place on NPCs that I have, well, kind of directed them to put on them, and using devastating combos together or lining up abilities. As with all things, we won't know exactly how it, this will all play until we actually play it for ourselves, but from the outside looking in, it looks fun and engaging, especially at higher difficulties. At least um, more fun than holding down buttons in another Dragon Age game. On the same subject of a little bit more Inquisition shade, I apologize again to all fans of Inquisition, but this game is going to be mission-based. And I also want to talk about the skill tree. This return to a mission-based structure for Dragon Age is one of the things I actually really liked about Dragon Age Origins. It was how Dragon Age Origins was open, but also compartmentalized. It felt like it was both open and mission-based at the same time. Going from one part of the map to the next and following what really kind of felt like little levels that were crafted and constructed just for me to explore, but levels you could also revisit at times and find out new things. This, to me, didn't take anything away from the game. It was an open world, but it didn't need to be. Inquisition tried to go with a much more open world than that, with larger play areas and more freedom to roam about and tons of points of interest all over the map. It definitely had cool moments, and the exploration at times was fun, I won't lie, but with such an expansive RPG, I have to admit it eventually got tiresome, especially retreading the same areas or getting kinda lost. I'm also not much of an achievement hunter, myself, so getting every single point of interest was never something I was going to do. And that brings us to Veilguard and what it's been described as from the, the director, Corinne Bush. It has been described as a mission-based game that is handcrafted and curated, and missions that as you go further expand out more, with puzzles and exploration and branching paths, secrets, and even optional content. That sounds much more like a DAO, depending of course on how much of that exists in the game. But everything that I'm hearing so far sounds good. And so does the skill tree system. One of my favorite RPGs of all time is Final Fantasy X, a, system, a game that had a huge, huge skill tree, a, a web that just kind of expanded out. And it was basically one of those things where everything you chose meant something later. And they're kind of taking that and shrinking it down a little bit for the Veilguard. In the Veilguard, you'll have a similar looking skill web with three different paths for your class or specializations, and you fill out toward those things. It's also been said that as you go through the game, you'll be able to hit your specialization by about mid game. So if you're a slayer, a warrior slayer, you will feel like a warrior slayer by about mid game. But you can also take some other things from other parts of the, the little skill tree that you're gone. I really like skill webs like this in RPGs and they're utilized all over the place, so I'm excited to see how impactful each decision you make is and how different you can build your classes in Veilguard. But the fifth and final reason, I think is the most important reason. At least, you know, you know what, it is, it is the most important reason. It's community. It's this community. It's the Dragon Age and RPG community. It's a big part of the reason why I made this channel in the first place. It's a shared love for an IP, a narrative, a gameplay loop, character designs, what have you. The community for Dragon Age is one that has endured for well over a decade across major design changes, fits and starts, rushed games, and games that have taken too long. It is a community that by and large is warm and welcoming and that has some of the absolute biggest lore nerds I have ever seen. Lore nerds that have given me absolute shit for years at this point because I 
may have chosen to sacrifice Isold because I didn't know that there was a third option and I wasn't going to sacrifice some kid. But it's a community that I'm so happy to be a part of. And I'm a, and a community that I'm glad will finally get to return to Thetas years and years after the last time we got a new game. And with Veilguard currently sitting at the third most pre-ordered game on Steam behind only Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and Sonic X Shadow, and 12th overall in sales about a week out from release, it sounds like that community will be as large and vibrant as ever. And while I'm sure there will be things we bemoan with the game that aren't what we wanted, I look forward to seeing the lore theories roll out and the art for fans like you watching this you, that you create born out of such a strong connection to characters and the worlds like what you get with Dragon Age. And in just a few short or agonizingly long days, 10 years of angst waiting for another Dragon Age will finally be let out on December 31st. I have already requested off on the first so I can get some actual good good time in playing and maybe review the game sooner rather than later. But uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to jump back into Thetas with all of you again. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Manfred really wanted to tell you one more thing before we go and he wouldn't leave me alone. He wanted to say that if you really like Dragon Age the Veil Guide or any other RPG, you can actually go vote right now in the Scuffed Game Awards, which is linked down below. You can vote for some of your favorite content creators who will be getting a cash award for the two smaller creator awards and a donation in their name for the larger creators. So go over there, vote for your favorite RPGs, MORPGs and creators and uh, ha join us on December 7th to see who wins. You like slouching. That's how you get bad posture. Say hi. It, thank the thank the patrons. Wait, hold on. Patrons. <laughs>